Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. We are in the middle of a big ice storm outside. You guys, we've gotten a quarter of an inch of pure ice already. So today is a fantastic day to stay inside because to be honest, going outside even to do chores this morning was dangerous. But we did it. We made it out of the house, back in, completed all the chores. No Not, broken limbs. Yeah, no, neither one of us fell at all, so it's a good thing. But right now, uh, it is freezing rain, and the icicles are getting longer and longer off of the deck and off of the little bird feeder we have out there. So it really is a great day for us to stay inside and do a joint cooking video together. Right. It's also a great day for some comfort food, yeah. which is what we're going to be making today. This is kind of our interpretation, a low carb interpretation of a tried and true meal, which is chicken and waffles. But on a low carb diet, you cannot have most of the ingredients <laughs> that are included in chicken and waffles. So we are doing a rendition here that is a lot healthier. Uh, like barely any carbs at all, and we know you guys are gonna love it. Both the chicken and the waffles are going to include ingredients from here on the homestead. We love to cook with our own homegrown, home-raised food, but we're also featuring a couple wonderful ingredients from Azure Standard. So let's get started on the chicken first because that's gonna be the part that takes the most time and has the most prep work. Our recipe today, we're gonna start off by making the chicken. It takes longer for the chicken to cook, so that's why we're gonna do it first. We are gonna be using one of our homegrown American breast chickens here to make our chicken and waffles. Uh, we're starting off with a whole chicken. I am going to be parting it out uh, so that the pieces are in a more usable form, but we're going to really just be using mostly chicken breast and maybe some chicken thigh uh, if we feel like we need more meat than just the chicken breasts. So because I'll probably use the other parts in a different, on a different meal, I'm just gonna part it out to make everything a lot easier. All right, now that Sarah has the chicken all uh, parted out, we're gonna set the parts that we're not gonna use off to the side. We're gonna start with, I guess we'll start with just the breasts. So we have our two chicken breasts. Now, most of the time when you're doing eating a, a keto or low carb lifestyle, um, you would want to leave the skin on the chicken, but because we're going to be basically breading these, for lack of a better term, uh, I'm gonna take the skin off today. So we do want skinless, uh, breast here. So we'll take the skin off. Now, if you don't raise your own chicken, uh, you can definitely just use you know, store-bought chicken breast as well. Uh, try to get the best quality that you can though. It's going to make your recipe that much better. Alright, so we're going to cut these into basically whatever size pieces we want. We're going to basically be making like chicken nuggets. Or chicken bites. And I think we will do the thighs as well. Now the thighs we're also going to have to take off the bone so we're going to take the skin off and we'll debone it. So now we have our chicken chunks cut off the bone, all ready to go. It's time to get started on actually breading these. And then we're actually gonna be making these today in our oven on the air fryer setting. Now for the breading on our chicken nuggets today, we are going to be using uh, pork rinds instead of breadcrumbs. 
Other than that, it's going to be very similar to a traditional type breading that you would do with breadcrumbs. Uh, what we're going to do is I've got some pork rinds here. We're going to load up our blender. And it may look like you're starting with a lot, but to be honest, this doesn't make a whole lot. Let's see how many we can fit in here. I'm going to blend these down just a little bit and then we're going to add some Parmesan cheese as well. And then we're going to use some Parmesan cheese in here as well. Uh, we like to buy this, uh, these blocks of Parmesan cheese. We buy these from Azure Standard. Uh, if you're not familiar with Azure Standard, uh, I know Sarah touched on it a little bit earlier, but Azure Standard is a bulk buying group. They have both organic and non-organic food you can buy in bulk. Uh, some things you can buy in smaller quantities. And basically what happens is once a month, a uh, semi will show up at a point in your community and everybody who's placed an order at that time will get together they'll unload the truck you'll be able to pick up your order and it's a really good way to save quite a bit of money on organic stuff bulk stuff or whatever it is that you need uh, we'll leave a, a link in the description so you guys can check out Azure Standard but uh, we've talked about them a lot because we use them a lot here on the homestead for anything that we can't raise or don't produce ourselves in this case, our Parmesan today is coming from Azure, and this is a really good quality Parmesan. We really like it. Now, we grate it with just a you know handheld cheese grater, uh, but it makes kind of big pieces like this. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna add that right into our um, mixture of pork rinds. And I don't know exactly how much this is. It doesn't really matter a whole lot, probably close to a cup or maybe right around a cup. We're going to add those in and then we're just going to grind that up a little bit so that it's a little bit finer in our uh, pork rind crumbs. All right, and then we're just going to dump these right back into the bowl. And there we go. That's basically like a low carb version of bread crumbs or like panko crumbs. And that's what we're going to use to bread our chicken. All right, so to bread these, we're gonna do it very similar to what you would do for a traditional recipe. We're good, we've got our pieces of chicken. I'm gonna be using three eggs. Uh, in our case today, we're using duck eggs, but the type of eggs doesn't really matter. But look how big those yolks are on these duck eggs. Our ducks were laying pretty good right up until this cold stretch that we just got where we're down into the single digits and now they've pretty much stopped again. I'm hoping though we've got some warmer days coming up this week. I'm hoping that that means they were gonna, they're were they going to start laying again. So we're just going to kind of scramble these eggs a little bit in the bowl. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put some of our uh, crumbs here into the final bowl. I don't put them all in at once or and I don't put the chicken right in here because we may not need all of those and if we have leftover then we can just save it for the next time we make this as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our pieces of chicken. I'm going to take a few at a time and I'm going to put them into the egg. We're just going to make sure that they're completely coated with egg. Then we're going to take them and put them into the crumbs. Make sure they're completely coated with the crumbs. And then we're going to set them over here onto our racks. Now, we are going to be doing these today in our oven on the air fryer setting. Uh, we've also made these pan fried on top of the stove, which is absolutely awesome. You can fry them in lard. Um, this is just a little less messy to do them in the air fryer because you're not getting a lot of stuff spattering all over the place. But you can do them just on a cookie sheet in your oven. You can do them on the stovetop. However you want to do them, you can do them. So I'm going to work to get all of these breaded. And then what we're going to do after that is we're actually going to put these in the freezer for about 20 minutes. So that helps the breading just stay on a little bit better. And at that point, we'll put them in the oven at 400 degrees. 
All right, so I've got our chicken nuggets here breaded. I wasn't able to fit all of them on the pan, so I did all of them that I could on these two pans. And again, we're gonna put these in the freezer now for about 20 minutes. During that time, we'll get all cleaned up from this. And then as soon as these go in the oven, we'll also start the chaffles. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes and we've had these in the freezer. Putting them in the freezer really just kind of helps the breading stay on. The chicken is not at all frozen. It's a much colder than it was, but it's not at all frozen, but it does help the breading stay on. So we're gonna put these in our oven again at 400 degrees. Ours is on an air fryer setting, which really just has like a fan that kind of circulates it around. But you can do this without that as well. I'm gonna put these in. I think they're gonna take about 15 minutes to get done because this isn't really thick chicken but we will check them with a meat thermometer, especially with poultry, you always wanna make sure you're safe. You wanna make sure you're up to 165 degrees. So we're gonna put these in. We'll check them in about you know 10 or 15 minutes and see where they're at. And in the meantime, we're gonna get started on making chaffles. Now chaffles are cheese waffles, where the waffle part is primarily made of cheese but also of egg. The egg binds really well with the cheese and it fries up in a waffle maker almost just like a waffle. Now we're not going to be eating this with um, syrup because that would not be a low carb option for our chaffles, but it's a nice savory addition to your meal. Now we are not eating any breads, we're not eating any pasta, crackers, those kinds of things. So chaffles are a really nice alternative for us and they taste fantastic. Now traditional chaffles are just like what I said, eggs and cheese, but I like to add just a couple extra ingredients to make them extra wonderful coming right out of the waffle maker. But I promise you it is not difficult and they come together really quickly. So we are gonna start off with eggs. I'm gonna be using two eggs, and uh, one is a duck egg, which is big, but the other is a silky egg, which is small. So they're gonna kind of uh, equal two large eggs. I do want you to see the difference in size between a duck egg and a silky egg. It's actually pretty, pretty cute. Well, the, that yolk broke, but there is a big difference. Now to the same bowl, we are going to add a half of a cup of cheese. We are using mozzarella cheese. That's what we have a lot of available on the homestead because I have been making homemade mozzarella from our cow's milk. And then I shred it up right away and I freeze it in freezer bags so we can take it out as we need it. So I'm putting in one half cup of shredded mozzarella we actually really love cheddar cheese in this recipe as well. But today, we're just using mozzarella. Okay, there are two more things that I'm adding that you don't have to, but I really love to add. The first one is almond flour. Now, I buy almond flour and lots of other products in bulk from Azure Standard, like Kevin was telling you about. Almond flour is a great one to have on hand, and it is really helpful to buy in bulk from Azure Standard. Okay, I am going to be putting uh, two tablespoons of almond flour. I'm also going to be adding about an eighth of a teaspoon of baking powder. Uh, the baking powder adds a nice fluffiness to the waffles. I'm just gonna break it up and we're just going to mix this up. Now I have a waffle maker here. It has been preheating. It's just a waffle maker that we got from Walmart actually. I did spray it with a spray avocado oil ahead of time to make sure uh, that hopefully this won't stick. It is ready to go. So we're gonna open this up and divide this batter into the four little compartment areas of the waffle maker and we'll let it cook.
We're just gonna let this cook in here. Eventually you'll see steam start rising out of there and we will know it's done when the steam has gone away. We'll take it out and do another one. This one is going to be for just one person's chaffle. We're gonna make two. While we're waiting for that one to cook, I'm gonna go ahead and get the second one ready. Now, Kevin actually prefers his chaffles without the almond flour. I like it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one without the almond flour. Two eggs. Half a cup of cheese. And I am gonna do the baking powder, although you guys, it is optional. It just makes it a little fluffier. Just whisk that up and it will be ready for when our first chaffle is finished. Okay, I think my chaffle is ready. It, the steam has stopped coming out of the waffle maker. Looks amazing. Let's just take this out, put it on my plate. I'm just gonna close it, make sure it heats up again, and then we'll put Kevin's uh, mixture into the waffle maker. Okay, it's ready. Kevin's chaffle is ready. So we're gonna go ahead and take that out of the waffle maker. There we go. They both look absolutely perfect. Kevin and I just thought of something else to make for this amazing meal. Uh, we just had a brainstorm about it and we think it's gonna be perfect to go with this meal. We wanna share it with you guys. Now we have been making farm cheese on our homestead for a long time with our fresh milk. In fact, we've done at least one video about it, maybe more than one video about it. But our friends, Shelly and Rich from Air to Ground Farms, they also have a YouTube channel. They told us that they do something really fun with their farm cheese. They fry it. We tried the fried farm cheese and you guys, it is probably the most amazing thing we've ever eaten the farm cheese with or prepared it in that way. So we are going to do that for you guys and have it with our meal today. All right, so here is some of our homemade farm cheese. I always, uh, when I make it, I put it in like a big glass bowl so it makes a nice round you know, piece of cheese. So this is a quarter of one of those. What we're going to do is we're gonna slice this into pieces about a half inch thick. Now the kind of cool thing about this is that this farm cheese doesn't melt. It gets softer, but it doesn't actually melt. So when you pan fry it, it gets nice and crispy on the outside, but it doesn't just you know, run all over the place. So I'm gonna just cut that into pieces like this. We're gonna head over to the stove. I'm gonna use some butter. We're gonna heat some butter up in our cast iron skillet. And then that's what we're gonna use to actually fry this cheese. We're not quite back into making homemade butter yet because right now our calf is still with our cow and he gets most of our cream. So we're not getting that much cream at the moment to make butter out of. So we're still buying butter at the store. While we're waiting for our butter to warm up in our frying pan, I'm actually gonna check on the chicken and see how that's doing because it has been 15 minutes. Go ahead and take one of these out. Look how good that is looking. That breading stayed on perfectly. I'm gonna check one of the kind of thicker pieces here with our thermometer. I think it's actually done. That one was at yeah, it is done. So I'm gonna take both of these out so they can start cooling off a little bit. All right, our butter is heated up. We're gonna take our cheese slices. We're gonna put them in our pan. We're just gonna let them fry for a few minutes on each side. We'll do it on this side till it's nice and golden brown, then we'll flip it over to the other side and they'll be done. All right, our cheese is ready to flip. Look how amazing that looks. Because it gets like a nice golden brown crust on it and it just tastes so good.
All right, our cheese is done. I'm actually going to just put it right on our plates here with our chaffles. Well, you guys, while we have a frying pan that has hot butter in it, and these have kind of cooled down a little bit, I am going to utilize that extra butter, and I'm just going to warm these up and soak up some of that amazing butter into this chaffle. It's going to be fantastic. It'll only take a couple of seconds, but it's just going to make it so wonderful. All right, this one is done. And I'm going to add a little bit more butter because that chaffle really soaked it up. Let's put that back on there. It's going to be amazing. Okay, I think that's good. Chaffle is nice and hot. Well, you guys, look at this. This is an awesome dinner right here. We've got our chaffles, which are so good, especially with that butter on. We've got our chicken nuggets, which I'm telling you guys, you'll never go back to using regular breadcrumbs after you make it this way with the pork rinds. It is so good, and I think even crispier than with breadcrumbs. And then this amazing pan-fried cheese. Thank you so much to Rich and Shelly from Air to Ground Farms for giving us this tip. You guys, if you haven't checked out their YouTube channel, go check it out. They've got some great stuff. You guys, this is comfort food right here. This is as good as it gets on a day when it's having a nice storm outside. We are not missing out on anything by eating this way. This keto version of chicken and waffles is amazing. Right. Like I said, the chicken, that is every bit as crispy and good as breadcrumbs with, you know, much better ingredients for you. And the waffles with the butter soaked in, you guys, it's so amazing. Yeah. And look at the texture. I mean, it's so similar to a waffle that you would make with flour. You'll never know the difference. And the cheese with a crispy coating on the outside and that butter. I think we might, going forward, eat most of our farm cheese fried like this in butter. Right. A lot of people have wondered why we've switched to eating this way, a low carb way. You guys, as homesteaders, we really feel like this is the best way to be eating because we can raise much more of what we eat by eating a low carb diet. Uh, you know, most of us, I would say most of us have gotten into homesteading because we want a healthier way of life. And you guys, having a low carb life, keeping your weight under control and just being healthier in general, it absolutely goes along with the homesteading lifestyle. And after one year of eating low carb, you guys, we've lost weight and we feel great. Right. This isn't a diet for us. This is a lifestyle. This is just how we're going to eat. So you guys, we hope you enjoyed this video. We hope that you enjoyed seeing maybe a different way to do some of your favorite ways so that you know that if you do switch to a low carb life, you don't have to give up some of the comfort foods that you absolutely love. You guys, if you're enjoying videos like this, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. And also remember that the best way you can help us here on The Homestead is just to share our videos on your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.